Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's uh, Russ here from Porky's Corner. Hope you're all well on this Sunday morning. Today, I'm joined by Matt from Essex. How are you doing, Matt? Very well, mate. Very well. Good to be back on. Yeah. Good, uh, to, good to be back on. We'll go straight in the no messing about. Joyce versus Devar. What did you think to the fight? I enjoyed the fight. I really enjoyed it. I've been looking forward to this since it's been made. Um, since it's been re-announced and set for the uh, last night's date, I've been anticipating it. It's one of the main fights I've been looking forward to, and I it didn't really have wasn't didn't really have a massive strong opinion either way of who was going to win. But um, I enjoyed the fight and. Uh, bit shell shot by the outcome so to speak but gradually as the fight went on I think it was it was heading towards that sort of ending but um I, I really I, I, yeah I really uh, I really I really enjoyed the fight and um listen we need more we de- listen just on the matchmaking alone we need more sort of fights like that need to just to keep us interested and not on pay-per-view as well, because hopefully that done big figures last night. So it'll encourage them, guy, BT, whatever, to stomp the money up to pay these people or these fighters properly so they can get on terrestrial TV, get out there more. But yeah. Um, regard, yeah, regarding the fight, yeah, I was really, really, uh, really liked the fight. And... Um, I was, um, yeah, it, it, you, we found out a lot, didn't we, last night? We did. We found out a lot about the bois. And we found out a lot about Joyce. And um, I, was imp- I was impressed by Joyce, you know. I, w- I was really impressed because um, he's not really shown much head movement. He showed that last night. He showed good, he could show fairly good distance control. You know, he he's able to control and keep the bar where he wanted him, and um, and obviously the jab. Well, people saying, "Oh, well, he's just landing the jab," but at the end of the day, that jab won in a fight, so it was really effective. It didn't really look effective from the outside looking in, but it was that that jab it wasn't like a ramrod sort of jab, but it was just a poking poking sort of quick jab, yeah, and. Uh, Dubois didn't really know how to deal with that. You know, he didn't really, really make the adjustments to take the jab away where he got his jab taken away himself. So um, I don't think Dubois looked at out of his, um, over his head or out of his depth or anything like that. It weren't nothing like that. It was a close fight coming up towards the end. But, um, All right, then. You, you, so what, 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 did you, what did you make of it? And uh, sort of bounce opinions off each other from right. what you made of it. Well, this is what I made of it, right? And I, I, just, I just don't look at the fight. I look at what leads up to the fight. So let's just back up just a little bit. Frank Warren is obviously on the back foot in it as regards being the number one top dog in it. Right? We, we both agree on that, don't we? Agree. Pardon? I agree. Right. So, where Daniel was Daniel Dubar rushed? I believe he were. He's only a baby, isn't he? What is he just turned twenty three? Yep, just yeah, right. tw- twenty three. Right, so he's twenty three year old. So he's a puppy, isn't he? Right, so he's twenty three. He's fighting an Olympic silver medalist who really should have had gold, right? So he's fighting an Olympic silver medalist, and his best wins, Gorman. Do we agree? Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Right. Would would Joe Joyce beat Gorman? Hundred percent. Right. Who was Joe Joyce's best win before mm. before Debar? Brian Jennings. Right. Would Brian Jennings beat Daniel Debar? Fifty-fifty, isn't it? Oh, before last Dubois night. Would, before last night, Debar would be favoured in that fight. But now, if they fought now, who wins? 
You don't know, do you? Not so sure, do you, do you, do you, no, I'm not so not. But I don't know what the bar's going to be like after that. No. no. Well, 24 hours in boxing, it's a long time, isn't it? People keep saying, oh, I'm going to come back, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. I've been out a year. Well, you've just seen the tides turn in the space of 24 hours, haven't you? So let's back up a little bit. Let's have a look at the matchmaking, right? Now, he's got rid of Jason McCrory, and has he got Steve Furness or something? Whoever put him in with him, he will be in a lot of trouble Monday morning. He'll be, what were we doing? But did Frank was Frank the one that signed off on the fight? Because looking at it now afterwards, maybe you were rushed. Maybe you were just rushed a little bit. You see where I'm coming from? He didn't know how to deal with that situation. Now, Martin Bowers, has, people have been critic, criticising Martin Bowers this morning. I've, I've seen something, somebody sent me from Malcolm X, you know, Spencer Fearing, where he was setting about Martin Bowers. This is how I look at it. What Martin Bowers said in that fight, I, I agree with, because he needed a rocket up his arse, the kid. But he'd never been in that situation before, so that's got to be Frank Warren's fault, hasn't it? But if Dubois had knocked Joyce out after having a rocket up his ass from his trainer, we'd all be saying Martin Bowers is a genius now, wouldn't we? But I think that he did bite down on his gum shield and he tried to get his son back into the fight because there were some tough rounds for him, weren't there? He'd never been in that situation before. Do you know where everybody's got a game plan, aren't they, until they get hit? And then it's not nice getting hit, is it? You know when you're used to blowing people away and knocking them out? And then all of a sudden, oh, I've just been hit back. It ain't nice, is it? Nobody likes being punched, does he, in face? What do you think? Yeah, I, I, I think from the middle rounds, you could see the distress signals in the in the corner where it, not a bit of blood. It, it must have... Listen, that's part of the game, obviously. It's, it's the art business. But when you go back to that stall, when you're getting pushed back by someone who's big, bigger or bigger, because there's not many people who's bigger than Dubois, not many heavyweights, but Joyce was bigger last night. He was pushing him back and he was getting hit. He's never been hit like that consistently. He'd been hit, obviously, before, but not been hit con consistently by someone like Joyce. And um, it, it, listen, it knocks the steam out of you. That's why you've got to go through these. This is why matchmaking is key, isn't it? And you get you get a gut check where I think like the build-up, they were saying, oh, well, he's already been 10 rounds with 10 Kevin Johnson. But 10 rounds with Kevin Johnson of just going, just going at a slow pace methodical and just in covering up is not someone hitting you back and coming to win. And he, he realised that from the fifth, sixth round that, jo that Joyce could take his shots and he was consistently getting jabbed. And he, he looked as well, Russ, you could see before the fight, he looked nervous and there was a lot of nervous energy where he knew that this was different to anywhere else he's been before in his career. And uh, when you when you don't get your own, especially in that ring, when you don't get your own way and you, you back, you're back in that corner and you're tired, your eyes closing, it's, it's a gut check and it's a reality check. And uh, yeah, he, listen, he showed plenty of art last night. Do you know what I mean? They could, he could have, he could have bowed early. He could have bowed out early on in that fight, especially seven, seven, eighth round when it was it was even. But he was slowly tiring. He was slowly tiring. He was slowly fatiguing, and the the combinations were becoming less frequent. All right then. So um, I've I've seen I've seen Spencer Fearon's interview about oh he's quit and that and. Listen, listen, it's, it, people can say, oh, you're quitting that. But when you're dealing with the, when you're dealing with an, uh, with someone's eye and that, because he, he obviously has gone down from a, he's obviously gone down from that jab through the eye. But when you, when you're dealing with, when you're dealing with that, with the eye side, I mean, I don't really, I don't really like to throw around the words quit and that, especially when, Listen, he could, yeah, he could have lost his eye. He could, some fighters would have, listen, some fighters would have carried on last night. I'm right, sure of that. I'm sure of that. But 
I don't. Okay. Yeah, go on. If he, if he loses his eye, there'll be an inquest, and they'll say he was rushed. Somebody's listen. When anything like this happens with your big cash cow, when you've got broadcasters behind you and you're investing a lot of time and effort into him, when anything like this happens, first you're angry, then you're upset, then you look for somebody to blame. But that aside, do you feel that Daniel Dubar in the ring, not outside the ring, because he's a well-spoken kid with manners, do you feel it with a bully being exposed? A bit like Mike Tyson and Gerald McClellan once... When Nigel Benz set about Gerald McClellan and hit him back and could take his punches and get up, oh, my God, he's got up. I'm used to dropping people. Do you think that Dubar, once he was hitting Joyce with his big shots and Joyce just kept coming forward, do you think he thought to his son, this is going to be a long night? Do you think that may had an effect on him, you know, the bully being confronted kind of thing? Well, yeah, if you're used to knocking people out in sparring, which I've heard he's done, and you're used to knocking people out in the ring, I mean, he's got rid of everyone except Kevin Johnson, and the people are going down from the punches that you're throwing, and, so, and he's just taking them, he's coming forward. Yeah, mentally, it's going to affect you. And and it, you, you're going to play, in, it's inside the ring, mentally, you're going to places where you haven't been yet. Yeah. So that's why that, that, that's what that, that's why you drum on about you got to go through these levels all the time with the British Commonwealth European levels, or you you got to be stepped up slowly because slowly you you get up you come up against bigger tests and people cut people take your shots and they come back and they give it to you back and it's part and parcel of learning in the game and coming up and breeding the fighter to becoming to realizing his potential. Obviously, he was too rushed. It's it's easy to sit sit back and say, "Oh, well, he was rushed and all that." But they must have sit down as a, they must have sat down as a team, the manager, promoter, trainer, and that, and they must have thought this was the right time. Or or maybe they would. Maybe they just. Maybe it was a lot of um, a lot of pressure from the broadcasters because who's the broadcaster got? Who is it? They got Tyson Fury that's in America. And who's the poster boy? Who is the main man? And then over here, it's the Bois and Yard. And then who else? Who else has he got? Maybe Liam Williams. That's it. The Bois is the money maker. The Bois and Yard are the are the people that are going to make money in the next couple of years. So, right. what do you think? <laughs> do you want me to speak? <laughs> sorry, sorry. Go on, I went on. Sorry, sorry mate. Sorry, I went on a bit there. It's a, you're answering a question and then you're going on into other, down other avenues. It's like you've had FET. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. You know when you've had FET and you're telling somebody a story, you tell them a story, you keep going down other avenues, don't you? And eight hours I've had later, half a coffee, mate. <laughs> <laughs> right, I have the same problem with Mickey Theo. Right, what you boys from Essex can talk. Right, this is how I look at it, right? The matchmaking is going to be criticised now, isn't it? Right? He's been it. He didn't like it. Can we say he quit? I don't know. He's a young kid. He's never been tested. It was his first test. But it turned out to be a massive test, didn't it? But getting back to the corner work, Martin Bowers screaming at him and that, like I've just said, if he'd have knocked Joyce out, he'd have been, he'd, he wouldn't be getting any grief today, would he? So I'm not going to be critical about Martin Bowers because I've seen a lot worse said by trainers. Do you know what I mean? And I thought Spencer Fear and were bang out of order, considering he used to train there. But when you look at Frank's roster, and you've just touched on a point there, Daniel Dubois has been put in an hard fight at a young age. Yard, he never went through the levels. Anthony Yard, did he? He went straight in with Kovalev, didn't he? Well, look what happened there. He got took out, didn't he? Had a year out at ring. I think Daniel Dubois might need a break. Because they've hyped him up as biggest thing since sliced bread. But for once in Frank Warren's career, he hasn't brought him on like he did the others. You know, like Billy Joe, Carl Zaggy, people like that, where they navigated through choppy waters. I think they've gone straight ahead with Titanic, but they've gone straight into uh, HMS 
warship or something like that and it's 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 not worked out on it and i think maybe there's a bit of pressure for them to put the bar on this pedestal because they shot the mouth off about him aren't they now and he maybe is real deal but it, it just didn't come off for him did it last night and there has to be accountability now somebody at bt will be saying to frank where do we go now frank where do we go here Fights have got to be made now. He's on the back foot even more now. What you're going to see now, you're going to see Frank come out and he's going to say things like, we need to make these fights with Eddie Earn. He's going to roll the dice now. Debar could be a different fighter altogether now. Shackles are off. But I think he loses against Joyce again. Sometimes styles just make fights. And, you know, when you look at Joyce's record, He's 12 and 0, 11 of them, he's knocked out, hasn't he? And he just doesn't knock them down, out. He breaks them down, doesn't he? He breaks them down with a volume of punches, doesn't he? I mean, I've heard stories about Joyce sparring Joshua up at EIS and terrorising him, mate. Terrorising him. Before he even turned pro. You know, when he was an amateur up there, he was sparring Joshua, who were, who were already just a world champion. Do you know what I mean? Terrorising him, mate. So, I think Joe Joyce has gone under radar because he's he's not big on talk, is he? And he, he, you know, he's not hanging out at back of IFL every day. He leaves all that to uh, that guy who is with all the time that advice. Jones. Yeah, he leaves it to him, and they've, they've played the blind, aren't they? Really, you've got to get take take that off to him, haven't you? Uh, Joyce has had a Joyce has had a strange career because. If he if he wins that gold, he gets he gets a massive backing and he gets a gets a promoter that builds him from the start. But he's he's never really had that really, has he? And um, he's been he's been to America. He's he's chopped and changed trainers. But like let's be let's be honest, he was getting bought in to lose last night. That's one of the reasons why I wanted him to win because I didn't I didn't I just thought that. Listen, it's the business. Yeah, some promoters bringing in you to bring in you, bringing you in to lose, and sometimes you've got to go through them fights. But he's he's been in even like Lewington is his debut. I mean, um, that's a solid date. That's a solid debut, isn't it? Really, Dylan and White like, but, win. Pardon? Dylan White's best win for a long time. Like Dylan White won yeah. the title against him, didn't he? Absolutely. So. Um, I mean, it's um, I, I consider where the bra goes. I mean, um, I just you know, to, to touching on the fight, I thought just the bra just run out of ideas as well. Once the once once his joke get taken away and the one two wasn't there because even when the uh, even when the bra was landing, them a lot of them shots were getting were getting. The sting taken out of him, Rust. You know what I mean? He was, he was getting clipped, Joyce, but he was sort of poking his head back. Do you know when Mayweather used to just take the sting out of the punches? Do you know, and never used, never lean used to back. take him flush. Lean yeah, back. lean back. Yeah, as he's leaning back, he's taking the sting out of the bra's punches all the time. And to, to be honest with you, did Joyce get out of second gear? I don't think he really did. He didn't really. He he was he was edging towards. Getting into them, well, he's, he's stopped in the tenth, but it was edging towards him stop putting his punches together and really letting the leather fly. Do you know what I mean? Because really, he didn't do really much. In, he he landed the odd few right hands, but it was mainly the it's mainly the jab that was doing the work and softened the bar up. So I don't think he really really went through the gears and really let his hands go to. So properly, and listen, that's a credit to the bra because obviously he respected his power. But yeah, I mean, <sighs> get, yeah, going going forward now, I mean, I, I know Frank Warren was talking about a rematch last night, Russ, but no, I don't want to see him. Who wants to see a rematch after that? He needs to be built back up again. On what grounds do they need a rematch on that? Uh, that's it, no grounds whatsoever. It's absolute, absolute nonsense. You know, so um, no grounds for a rematch. Um, and I think that that that'll be Frank just wanting to roll dice and finish the kid off because he could finish him off if they if if they rematch him. But what you're going to get now, you you might get people coming out at woodwork calling Daniel Debar out. So it could be a good thing for Frank because 
he's on back foot here. He's got Tyson Fury parked up with legal arguments with Al Heyman. That's his number one star. His number two star, Dubois, he's just been beaten and dismantled. And his number three star, Anthony Yard, he's been knocked out, and he? And, and they can't get fights with Eddie Earn. So he's in a tight spot. But what we have to give Frank credit for is he could survive a nuclear blast. He's like a cockroach, isn't he? But look at it like this. He will come back. Amir Khan got iced by Prescott inside half a minute, didn't he? They brought him back and they won a world title, didn't they? Yep. Against Kotelnik. So if he can do that with Amir Khan when everybody said he were finished and blah de blah. And Spencer Fearon's interview. I don't know what, what's the matter with him lately, but he went talking like that when he was at Sky Worry. Now all of a sudden he he, he wants to be vocal, doesn't he? Spencer Fearon has come out this morning or last night or whenever it were, and he's saying that he's finished and he'll not come back from it. Um, blah de blah, and he quit, and it's all pretty brutal stuff. Uh, we're going to see, aren't we? But I think that he will come back from it. I think they'll regroup. I don't think they'll get rid of trainer. I think that you win together, you lose together. I'd be disappointed if they did get rid of trainer because he's got him to that situation and, and they can look at it, turn a negative into a positive. The negative is he got beat, but the positive is he's got rid of that O now and he can just go forward and fight whoever. Because if he can go, <laughs> if he can hang with Joyce for nine, 10 rounds at that young age, I'm sure that he could uh, hang with a lot of other people. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what? Just um, yeah, I I I don't think they get rid of the trainer. I don't. I don't think he, it's not the trainer. It's not the trainer's fault. You know, the trainer was doing the best, the best of his can. Yeah. Get trying to get him through rounds, and I just don't think. I just don't think there was a plan B, C there, and with it, with his game plan last night, and I just. <laughs> Do you, know just, human um, beings, Do you know human beings, Mark? Do you know human beings, Creatures of habit. When you're a kid and you first go to prison, you're like, oh, I'm going to get, I'm going to get done in. I'm going to get this. I'm going to get that. It's going to be a nightmare. But, you know, second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time you go, you're all right about it because you've been there and seen it before, aren't you? It's like driving a car, isn't it? When you first get in, you're like, I can't do it. I can't do it. But after you've done it a few times, it's easy. When... When he when he hit Choppy Waters, the bar, he'd never been in that situation before, had he? And that's why his trainer were trying to find him up and that. Some trainers, they'll tell him that you're doing great when you're not. It's all kidology. Other trainers will put an arm around you. And then you've got Martin Bowers. He could have been a hero last night for what he said. Teddy Atlas with Michael Mora. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, the speech. Was it Povetkin? It was one of them where they were giving a talk to him and they made it about him. I think it might have been both because he's a bit of a drama queen, Teddy, isn't it? But some trainers, Peter Fury is another one. They're like Sergeant Major types. Do you know what I mean? Other trainers, like Brian Hughes, they'll try a bit of kidology with you, Robin Reedad. And then there's other trainers that will put, put an arm around you. Do you know what I mean? So every trainer's different. But if that had been my fight, I'd have said, what have you been doing? You should be doing this, you should be doing that. And I'd be screaming at him, trying to dig it out of him. But he'd not been in that situation before. So I think the book lays with Frank Warren, the matchmakers and BT Sport for gassing him up. Maybe he does need gassing up. Maybe maybe he's doing things in gym that's extraordinary. And he's, he's, he's doing things inspiring and they're all impressed. But doing it in front of the lights against an, an Olympic champion or Olympic silver medalist, whichever whichever you want to say, who's been in with better opposition, I think it's it's two different things, isn't it? Does that sound about right? Somebody's got to take the blame, and I, I think it's Frank. I think he's been put on back foot by Eddie Hearn, and he's had to push the kid. You know, He said he was going to take his time with him, didn't he, two years ago? Do you remember? <laughs> Yeah, but so obviously, so obviously, circumstances changed, and it's a, it's a, it's a, listen, it's a, obviously, it's a collective decision, you know. But 
I mean, sometimes when when you're that when you you climb in the mountain so quick as what he was, you need someone to someone who's experienced just to pull the reins and say, no, 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 we we're gonna go another route, you know. And this is where this is where experience comes experience comes in. So the the, the yeah. fellow the, the the fellow who Yoka fought the other night, the Christian Hammer, that is the perfect sort of middle fight because it, when they were doing the build up and that, and and uh, the boy was really confident when he was when they had Buncey around that table and that, and he was saying, "Oh well, he's the middle flight and." I'm gonna bring a sleeping bag. He, he needs a sleeping bag because Joe's going to sleep and that. Well, that he, jo, Joyce clearly wasn't that middle fight, and obviously he's underestimated him. He, De Bruyne's said obviously he's trained hard, but he's underestimated him. So, and uh, yeah, it's come back to it's come back to bite. It's come back to bite him. And that that fight last night, you, you mentioned a good point about Yard versus Kovalev. It, it it was like that, weren't it? It played out similar to that where Kovalev just controlled him with the jab. But the difference was is that Joyce weren't shot. So uh, Yard had a lot of success against Kovalev and nearly finished him. But Kovalev was shot. Joe Joyce was not shot there last night. He's not a shot fighter at all. And, um, it, yeah, it played out really fairly similar to that. Different, out, different outcome, really. But... We made a good point on that, but um, I okay, heard Dubois going to need some time. We don't know what the injury is, do we? Because it was the oh, I, if it's a if it's an eye socket, whew, oh, you don't you don't yeah you don't you hopefully hopefully it's not hopefully it's just um, severe bruising. Uh. And uh, but he's going to need a good six months off. I mean, with Dubois, I don't know how to slowly bring him back. What do you think next for Joyce? How do you think it all plays out? Where's the what's the chess moves, Russ? What's the because you know there's all the sorts of chess moves. He's now W number two in the WBO. So if that WBO vac- it comes up vacant, he fights Susie. You just answered the question, haven't you? Again. <laughs> right. Uh, what what but, what you just said? I think. But I'll I'll look at it like this, right? Chess moves is my game kid. So this is how I look at it. Looking into the porky crystal ball, Matt. Is that what you want me to do? Yeah. Yeah, but obviously it depends what happens December twelfth. But yeah, go on. I want to let's see the porky crystal ball. Right. Okay then. Right. Daniel Dubar needs parking up and saving from himself. Forget any rematches or all like that. He's got some searching to do and he inside himself if he wants to carry on and put it right but not with Joyce he's got to be built up and Frank Warren's the man to build him up they tried to rush him they ran into the juggernaut they've got beat it's a loss move on forget all that social media stuff with Eddie Earn gloating and I've heard the story that Eddie Earn were in hysterics of it well that's just Eddie Earn isn't it bottom line is this right they're not going to put Dylan White near Daniel Dubar are they they're not gonna, need that. They don't need each other at the minute. They're not going to put him near Joe Joyce, right? I see Daniel Dubar coming back in, bringing him on fights for a couple of years now and, and reining it in with him and then waiting for an opportunity. But what I see happening with Joe Joyce, I see him and Usek fighting and Eddie Earn signing him because... Look, boxing's a dog business. Sam Jones can sit there all he wants, saying Frank's his man, this and that, and blah de blah. They're in the driving position now. They're in they're in a, they're in pole position as regards. They've just beat Dubois, so it's Usek and Joyce for the WBO. It's got to be or a, or a final eliminator, or however they want to play it. Them two have got to fight for vacant belt. But if he signs your match room. If if Joyce signs with Matchroom, Eddie can put the WBO belts on, uh, vacate it with Joshua and let them fight for it. And then Joshua can pick it up at a later date, can't he? They can keep the belt in-house. And that's what Eddie wants. He wants to control all the five belts. Am I right? Yep. Now, we have in them two, the number one and number two at the WBO, Joshua, he's not going to want to fight any of them. Joshua's not going to want to fight Usyk or Joe Joyce. So, Eddie... 
gets rid of WBO, lets them have it, and they pick it up at a later date. They're going to go for fights where they're going to get make, make money, aren't they? And they're going, not going to put Joshua in danger. Usek and Joe Joyce, in my opinion, probably beat Anthony Joshua. Probably beat him, mate. That's what I think. Fury probably beats Joshua. So they're going to be three guys that they're going to avoid. But they are the top four heavyweights in world boxing at the moment. Tyson Fury. He could put Wilder in that, but he's, he's, he's been out too long now. And he'd be a year in Feb, won't it? Your top five. Fury. Depends how he comes back. Fury, Joshua, Wilder. Usyk, Joyce. They're your top five. Could you put Dylan White in that mix? No. Do you know why? He's won a vacant British. That's all he's done. He's just been knocked out by a 41-year-old. Fight before that. Who would he fight in before that? Malcolm Tan, Wack and Lucas Brown. They're all fotty, aren't they? Dylan White fights old men, doesn't he? Old men. But they're my top five. And how it pans out, I don't know. But Tyson Fury's parked up. And Daniel Dubar has just lost, been knocked out. So Frank Warren is in a tight spot now, isn't he? Do we agree on that, Matt? Yeah, we do agree. I do. He's in a tight spot. Yeah. He's been in tighter spots than this in his life. And he's a fighter, old Frankie Warren. But he's in a tight spot. And how he comes back from this, I don't know. And because he's in that tight spot, he's had to roll the dice. That's just my opinion. And I see Joyce going up from strength to strength. He's got a style that's very hard to break down, hasn't he? Only person who's going to beat him is a mover, your Tyson Fury's, your Usex. Because nobody can trade it with him punch for punch because he's just too relentless and his engine's too good. He is the Terminator, mate, him, from what I've seen last night. He's a Terminator, mate, him. I'm telling you now, he's like Beta B, Beterbi, whatever it's called. He's like him, mate. He just keeps coming, doesn't he? He's got a relentless style, but yeah. he's not. He's not got so. He's not got the miles on the clock from the pros. But he's had a bit of an amateur career. But I think with the, the age he's, in, he's at now, with the style he's got, I think it needs to happen within the next twelve months for him. He needs to get that. He needs to get them big fights. And he's, he's, next birthday, isn't yeah, it? For, yeah, for, so he's thirty-five. Yeah. So I think I don't know how it's going to play out because. Uh, I think he has he's contracted to Frank Warren. I don't know what sort of the deal that he's got and if he can get out of that deal or if Frank's gonna wanna keep promoting him and whatnot. I don't because I don't he, it, Frank's not really Frank Frank don't really seem intre- I don't seem committed to him like he is the bra, do you know what I mean? And he's he's in he, yeah, he's in the De bra sort of business with with Yard and whatnot. But um I don't because he it, if if Fury has to fight Wilder again, which is we, we're, which is looking like more and more because you're not hearing nothing coming out, so and obviously that might go to court. Yeah, it's going to do. Then what? What? So what does so Joshua Joshua face fights Usyk for the, his WBO mandatory? Then Joyce is sitting there at number one, waiting for another eighteen months, and that's not an ideal situation for him, is it? No. That's the worst. That's, I suppose that's the worst thing that can happen. I suppose the best thing can happen is Pulev comes over in a couple of weeks' time and knocks Joshua out, and then he has to rematch Joshua, but he has to vacate the belt. And then Joyce gets his shot versus Usyk. It's all getting messy again with belts, isn't it? it just yeah, it's going to get... We're going to get one champion. They all seem to be getting fragmented up, doesn't it? And it's just one life after another, isn't it? Yeah, and Usyk would have been watching it last night, and... He, he he probably if if fancy he probably rather fight um I don't know but, uh, I'm too sure to be fair who would who would look at that rather fight really at him. Mark, didn't he in that WBSS or whatever that uh, we had guards off but they still had vests on didn't they did they, I'm sure or were no head guards yeah. wasn't it yeah I mean I could it's see Usyk picking yeah I see Usyk picking him apart Russ but. <laughs> Over 12 rounds over that distance. It's a tough fight. It's a tough night for Usyk. Let me ask you this it's then, tough... Let me ask you. Who, who wins in these fights? I'm going to put to you now. Right? Joe Joyce, Dylan White. Who wins that? Mm-hmm. I 
I'd fancy, do you know what? I'd fancy Joyce. I'd, I'd lean towards Joyce. Leaning? Jeez. Lean, lean to, I'd lean towards Joyce. Yeah, I would lean towards Joyce, but I don't think there, there's much in it. All right, then it will win. Go on, then. Right. I'm just going to I'm gonna give them to you. Just give me a name, yeah? Right. Yeah, well, we'll, right, we'll. Right. So, Joyce against Chisora. Joyce. Joyce against White. Joyce. Joyce against Parker. Joyce. Joyce against Ergovic. Um, say Joyce. Joyce against Magadoff. I'm not seeing that too much of Magadoff to be fair, but yeah. Well. yeah. Yeah, say Joyce on experience. All right, then. Joyce against Dave Allen. Oh, Joyce. Right. Joyce against Yui. Styles, you see, Styles. See how I led him into that, folks. So you're not sure on that one, eh? And I, and I've, I, I know. No, the card. no, because yeah, that because of the because of the style when it, that's a horrible, it's a horrible style. It's a horrible style for Joyce. Joyce, yeah. So you're not sure on that. A lot of people will say, "Porky, he beats you in, knocks him out." Well, Styles make fights. He couldn't do what we all said, could he, Joyce? Does Joyce beat Tyson Fury? No. Does he beat Wilder? No. Right. Does he beat Joshua? Yes. Right. So we rate Joe Joyce then, don't we? We do. Do we say now that Daniel DeBar is five years behind them all now and he, he's going to come good in five years when everybody else is up Wayne. Do you think that's going to be his time? In two to three years, I think. Two to three years. So it'll be 26, 27 then, yeah? Yeah. All right then. That's it. That's interesting, that. Any we've left out? Well, there's one we've left out. They fought before. Joyce Yoker. That's a pick and fight, isn't it? Yeah. I'm not too. I'm not sold on Yoko. I wasn't impressed the other night. Maybe Christian M is a lot tougher than what we uh, what we uh, respect. You know, Christian M is a perfect fight for um, for Dubois in a couple of fights. Time. Right. Tough, tough, he tough. The other night, he just soaked up anything what Yoko had. And he, he wasn't really discouraged, and he kept coming forward. Got out box, but um, he's yeah, he's someone who can test you. Yeah, and he would have run over Dave Allen if he'd have got if he he would have completely run over Dave Allen if that fight would have happened. So let me put that one in there. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right then. All right then, mate. Well, what we'll do, we'll leave it at that for today because otherwise I'll be going over the same stuff for another other yeah. interview. We'll just keep it at that today. But there's been a lot of boxing on and I've got a lot of catching up to do. So no good we're doing it. Yeah. Fancy and everything. Russ, we've got, we got a couple of good fights next week, mate. We've got Yard against Arthur. I, don't, I mean, Yard's favoured to win that. But, of course, if Yard loses, I mean, it's a, it's a bad few weeks for Frank, isn't it? If, if, that, if, uh, if he does lose, I don't think he will. But it's uh it's it's an unknown sort of fight because we don't know how good Lyndon Arthur is. You know, and uh, then we've got pardon. You know, if Yard loses, you know what's gonna happen. Oh Frank will feed him to pigs. Be very careful of men with a pig farm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then we've got uh, we've got Spence Garcia next week and um it's, uh, I don't know how Spence is gonna be after the car crash. So uh Box Nation have picked that fight up, so um, yeah, well, I'm, look, I'm looking forward to that. And then uh, Billy Joe, oh, uh, not interested. <laughs> Do you Wait, care? Joe's fight is it next week? Next Friday, it's Friday. It's Friday, isn't it? The fourth. Yeah. Is that the fourth. 
It's the fourth, fifth, yeah. Fifth fourth. The fourth. Fifth. Yards on the fifth. Yards on the fifth and Billy Joe's on the fourth. Billy Joe's at fourth of December Friday then, isn't it? Yeah, because yeah. Penis' show's on uh, third. No, hang on a minute. What date we on? Hang on a minute. Fifth is a Saturday. Fourth is a Friday. So when's Dennis's show then? Dennis's show must be 11th of December then, is it? 11th of December, yeah. yeah. 11th of that's December. A, yeah, that's a date before Joshua for it. So that's, yeah, that'd be on the Friday. What, Cash Alley and knocking his opponent out and uh, calling out Joshua? What, do, you, do you see that? <laughs> Cash hasn't got an opponent, no, just... has he? No, he's not got an opponent. Well... Got knocked out last night. His opponent. If you get knocked out, you can't fight for twenty-eight days. So what? What's Dennis doing? Having an opponent for cash, but yet the opponent's fighting thirteen days before. Well, that's a risk, isn't it? So now that that opponent got knocked out last night by a guy that I set up a meeting for Dennis to sign him, David Adelaide, and he couldn't get it off at line. He ended up going with Frank. So in that ironic, he knocks the guy out. Well, Cash is fighting, so who's Cash going to fight now? And is a change of opponent good with, uh, I don't know, 12 days to go? They've got to be in bubble by Tuesday night, haven't they? Fight week, if it's a Friday. So it's that leaves him. It's Sunday today. He can't do not while Monday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. have got nine days to get Cash an opponent. And they're in tier three. And RV own fight's not on now with Frank, is it? Tommy Frank. So maybe you should have listened. Yeah, I think he just needs to get I just need to get a show done and needs to get his fighters out, doesn't he? So Dennis Dennis needs me to make a comeback, doesn't he? That's what it is. But Dennis, I'm not making any comebacks. I'm happy where I am with my team at the moment. <laughs> um, Russ, Russ, just just one more point before I go, yeah. Billy Joe Saunders versus Danny Jacobs next. That's the fight that happened. Well, let me tell Jacob's you this. Performance. Let me tell you this, right? Danny Jacobs, 36 and 3, just beat Rosado, right, on a split decision. I thought he got beat and he looked old. But let me tell you this. Rosado, in his last 14 fights, has gone 4 and 8 and 1 and a no contest. So how is he even getting headline fights like that, Gabe Rosado? Is that because he was in that film, Creed? He shouldn't be nowhere near fights with Danny Jacobs. But what he showed last night is that Danny Jacobs is an old man now, isn't he? It's all caught up with him. And Billy Joe, he'll he'll be ready for that, won't he? Somebody who's on yeah. who's the top of hill coming down, he'll, he'll lap that up, won't he? So, yeah, that's what you're saying. I'd already had that ready, but I was going to talk about that with Terry. <laughs> but you nicked his thunder. <laughs> no, no, yeah, but t- listen, Terry would be able to put it better than me, mate, because he breaks things to hand a lot. Terry or yeah, yeah, both both of them put it, they, yeah, they they'll have another they they're looking at it from another angle, so you can you can re, yeah, you can revisit that. So um, Terry and Rico and Dale, the voice of hardcore pay-per-view. Yep, shout out to Dale as well. Shout out to Dale the Great. Shout out to Terry, shout out to Rico. Yeah, will do a, all, all do a good all do a good job. And um yeah, shout out to Terry's podcast. The beautiful yeah, beyond boxing, beyond boxing, or the beautiful podcast on Spotify. Big shout out to TC, but yeah, all right, then. Well, listen, big shout out to Frank Smith and Dave in Berry as well. All right, yeah, and uh, yeah, shout, shout out, out to Porky. listen, go on, go on, shout out to Porky's Corner, shout out to all the hardcore fans, all the people that tune in every every day listening to your videos and listening to your content, and everyone who comes on and contributes. Shout out to Boxing Asylum. Just yeah, just shout out to all the boxing fans keeping it real and keeping it honest. And uh we get a shout thanks for having out. us on, Russ. Can we get a shout out to Porky's uh Porky's Fred West jumper? I think I found it. I meant to throw it. Two seconds. I think I found it. Can we give a shout out to it? Hang on. Thought it were in there. Oh, here we are. Porky's Fred West jumper. Somebody's Somebody keeps going on about it. Here we are. It's the same jumper that Fred West were uh, were dealing with people in. <laughs> oh, you look at that for a jumper. Hey? Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Jesus. I must have worn it about four times. 
sometimes <laughs> when, you, when you go shopping, like you don't know what you're buying. There, yeah, I bought that one and the blue one. But uh, what can you do? All right, then. Well, listen, mate. Big shout out to Porky's Fred West jumper. I might wear that in next interview just for a laugh. So, the gentleman that reminded me about it. I hope you're well, but you're blocked. I've been told. <laughs> They'll set another account up anyway, Matt, won't they? Yeah, mate. So you have a good day. It's Sunday. You too, mate. Peace you out. Too. Enjoy your su- enjoy your Sunday, mate, and all the best. You appreciate very much, your son. You take care, Matt. I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Thank you, mate. Bye. Well, I enjoyed that. It was uh, Matt Skelton from Essex. Uh, so I'll have him on again. He's a good pal. Uh, I think that's about it. I'll get this uploaded. I don't know whether to send this to my man and let him jazz it up. I think we'll put this one out and I'll let him jazz next one up. So I like to get him out straight away. All right. Peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep sporting boxing. Let's have a look. That's a 